Days late, dollars short. 35 days and a $1.1 trillion shortage here. The president's federal budget proposal due by the first Monday in February, finally submitted on this second Monday of March with a projected deficit of $1.1 trillion. The proposal envisions a balanced budget kind of far in the future, 2034, long after President Trump and many current members of Congress have skedaddled out of office. The budget projects $7.8 trillion in borrowing over the next 10 years. But our next guest in her group says that that severely undershoots her numbers, which spike closer to $10.5 trillion of borrowing. Maya McGinnis is president of the Committee on a Responsible Federal Budget. Welcome, Maya. All right, what is the best word from what you've seen of the budget you feel would describe this new budget proposal the president and his team have put out? So the budget is unrealistic. Um, and I'd say it's unrealistic in some ways that are, are would be good things and some ways that wouldn't be, that aren't as so good for, for the budget. But it relies on some really unrealistic assumptions about economic growth. And what we want to be doing is everything possible to grow the economy. But because we have an aging society, big demographic shifts, there's just a realism about that growth is going to be lower going forward than it's been before. And they have some very heroic assumptions. We just showed the booklets that, that were put out. I recall usually in the past when they put out budgets, they were very thick. Uh, what is going on? What have you seen of the budget? And can you make a judgment call yet on line by line items? Yeah, I've seen less than normal. So there are parts of the budget that are missing, which means we can't fill in all the policy details. And one of the big exercises for us in budget world is trying to get the numbers to add up because everybody uses different budget baselines and okay. different assumptions. And there's not enough information yet. Uh, and I'm not sure what the cause of that is this year. Right. But we can see there is, as you said, a tremendous amount of borrowing in this budget. Well, okay, spending $4.74 trillion with revenue coming in short of that by 3.6 trillion uh, you you won't call you not only won't your group call this a responsible budget i've seen these words in the release from your group full of accounting gimmicks and fantasy assumptions let's first tackle what your team says is a significant discrepancy between the 7.8 trillion the administration says it'll borrow versus what you say is more like 10 trillion yeah, that boils down to these assumptions about economic growth. So the administration is assuming that growth will be 3% or more for most of the decade. There isn't actually any other serious impartial budget group uh, analyst out there that's calling for that growth level. We've They're seen saying it's lower. Much lower because, again, demographics. There's been some stimulus from spending increases and tax cuts in the short run, but that's not going to be able to persist. And I'll tell you, the other real risk we have is that in the next decade, we're very likely to see a recession, which means growth will be significantly lower and debt will be significantly higher during that period. But Maya, you know, they don't think about the next decade. No, <laughs> they think about no, the next is, election, right? The, the problem with all of this, and this is what, that's the big challenge in budgeting, actually, which is right. it's politics over policy, but it's also short term instead of looking at the long term. This is about laying out a blueprint to guide the country. And we do need to be thinking about that because there are a lot of things that we face around the corner that could be significant challenges. Mm -hmm. We should have the fiscal bandwidth to be able to respond to. About uh, $726 billion in spending for next year uh, on defense, but there are cuts. Let's just put this in here. It appears that the president has put forth an $845 billion cut from Medicare, which is very popular with the elderly, obviously. And uh, there's an overhaul for Medicaid, which is, of course, for low-income Americans that would, they say, save $241 billion over 10 years um, by giving more power to the states on handling Medicaid. Um, cutting EPA, State Department, Transportation Department, Department of the, the Interior, and I think with State Department, it's about a 28% uh, chop there. Uh, do they get credit for, for trying to slice and dice a little bit here? They do. So the unrealistic part of this is that they probably won't happen. And one of the key things to watch is after the budget has been dropped today, does the president actually push some of these savings measures? But there are a lot of good, serious, well-developed policy ideas that are in this budget First off, in health care, we have to do something about health care costs. We know that's the, one of the biggest problems in the budget. And so looking at savings in Medicare and Medicaid, looking at savings for prescription drugs, which they do, mm -hmm. those are all serious and thoughtful proposals. There's also some reforms they do in student loans that we should be thinking about and disability. So, yes, this part of the budget should be taken seriously. I hope the president takes it seriously and he continues to push these ideas that, that really would save some money. Did you happen to see that the president would like to um, tax e-cigarettes to pay to run the FDA. 
uh, which which I think is rather interesting, but I just find it fascinating because when Mayor Bloomberg uh, put forth the soda tax, it was you're the nanny state, you're horrible for doing this, but yet. You know, both you could argue sugar and uh, e-cigarettes might not be good for your health, and now the president is getting on that bandwagon. What do you think of those kind of trade-outs and ideas? Well, that's interesting. I think that's one of the initi initiatives this White House has pushed that a lot of people didn't expect that has a lot of popularity beyond partisan ways. I mean, this is something that certainly parents who are watching their kids with uh, e-cigarettes becoming more popular there also are getting behind. I think that's the kind of creative thinking that we want. Mm -hmm. So user fees to fund different things makes a whole lot of sense. Um, they also do, do, though, slip a huge tax cut into their budget baseline. You don't even see it in the right. budget. They just assume it. That would dwarf the additional revenue they'd collect from there, and we'd end up having less revenue overall under this budget, which does right. widen our deficit gap. As we go, September 30th, we hit the spending cap once again. Do you foresee another government shutdown because Democrats do not want to get on board this budget? Yeah, I think that there's a real risk. And one of the problems, of course, is the more you have government shutdowns, the more they become a common tactic. And we've been seeing them with growing regularity, which is troubling, of course, because when a government can't stay open, that's not a sign that things are working not well in all. that country. But the differences between defense spending, which this budget proposes a very major increase in, and they do use a gimmick to get it there. It's called OCO, and it's kind of a becoming a defense slush gotcha. fund. I don't think that's the right way to do it. But huge defense increases paired with huge domestic discretionary decreases, that's going to be where the real fight between the House, the Senate, and the President are, because there's very big disagreements. What I worry about is we'll do what we did last time, which is just increase both of them, even more than, than the exactly. White House had asked for, and put it on the national credit card. And that's exactly the opposite of what we should do. This is a budget. If we want to do something, we should pay for it, and we should make some trade-offs, because borrowing from the future is not the right or responsible answer. And yet they do it over and over. Yes, Maya, they do. thank you. Both parties. Thank Maya you. McGinnis of the Committee for a Responsible Budget.